finally, they collide. We are underway. Ray we Flores, just... Showtime Sean Porter, Coach Larry Wade. My apologies. I think we just got the game plan from Jay Leon Love, the coach of, of uh, Jake Paul. He said, hey, you don't take no steps back. You don't back up. Obviously, right there being rushed, he did smart, you know, to, to take steps back right there. But we'll see what happens. Uh, Tommy, on the other hand, he started as I expected him to, a little fast, coming right after Jake. This is what I expected from, from Tommy. Tommy Fury, led by his father, John Fury. Also his older brother in attendance, Tyson Fury, Jake Paul, his brother, Logan Paul. Social media superstar and WWE superstar also in attendance, supporting his younger brother, Jake Paul. Time being called by referee in charge, Hector Afu. Well, the ref's going to warn them about wrestling, but I'll tell you what Jake is doing. Jake is trying to settle down, Tommy. So if I grab you a couple times, all that high energy that you came to the ring with, you don't have a chance to use it, you settle down. Both men have predicted knockout wins under four rounds. There's an overhand right. That overhand right has put away the likes of Tyron Woodley, also put Anderson Silva on the canvas in Jake Paul's recent victory back in October in Arizona. Listen, Tommy has doubled and tripled up on the jab. And then finally, Jake came over the top with overhand right. If you're Tommy, keep jabbing. Don't stop jabbing because you see a weapon coming after you. You, you stabilize that weapon by continuing to use your jab. The corner of Tommy Fury telling him to circle to his right. Again, this is an 18-foot ring. It's what Tommy Fury wanted. This is a small ring. Jake Paul said, no problem. Meaning, it's not hard to find the other man. Overhand right over the top, connecting for Paul. I get this is gonna be a night of overhand rights because we got a lot of that from Badu Jack, and we see Jake Paul. We know him for being really heavy-handed with that right hand, and he's he's starting to release it with, with, with authority. Jake Paul has that right hand. He's ready to unload it. Tommy Fury said, I'm a way better boxer. There's no way this guy can beat me. Tommy Fury has proclaimed the public has only seen 10% of what I'm capable of inside the ring. If you look at this fight right now, you have to ask yourself, who is quote unquote the YouTuber and who is quote unquote the boxer? Because if you look at it, Jake Paul is showing that he is definitely a seasoned boxer. He just has to stay consistent in what he's doing and put pressure on him in the same way. BJ Flores, Jay Leon Love in the corner of Jake Paul. There's a left hook for Jake Paul. Final moments of the first round. Jake Paul using his jab as we near a right hand to the body by Paul. Back comes Tommy Fury, left hook. Fury opening up towards the end of the first round. The action heating up here still around. in Saudi Arabia. Right, you're moving in now. Two phase attacks on the Latin boy. He's got nothing. You feel good? He's took the best punch off him. Nothing. What you do is slow your job down. Let's work on the sides. And what you need to do is hand high, step in with a power, step in with a jab. Step in with a jab, it's fine. Yep. When you're inside, no hold. Nice finish right here. This is how you close around. Tommy Fury heard the clap. He ran right after Jake Paul. If anything, you steal the round there. One big punch landed in that round. From Jake Paul was overhand right, but then here's the finish right here. This is what you do. You give the judges the last impression. Now they remember what you did. They remember you you backing Tommy up. Excuse me, you backing Jake up. They remember you landing shots. They remember you wanting to win that round. Well, during that sequence, Tommy Fury landed a left hook and then continued to pursue Jake Paul. And then he landed a right hook right on the jaw of Paul. Round number two begins between Jake Paul and Tommy Fury. Of Fury's, all of his knockouts have come in two rounds or under. Tommy received an overhand right in that first round and he ate it really well. What he can't afford to do is keep that jab hand down after releasing it because we know the punch right there, we know that the overhand right is coming from Jake Paul, especially in a movement, in a moment like that right there. Tommy Fury said while Jake Paul was on the Disney Channel, he was in camp learning as an amateur 
getting his lumps in, sparring with heavyweights that his brother Tyson Fury was sparring with in preparation for his professional fights. Jumping right hand by Tommy Fury. Good work right there from Tommy Fury. And just a great kind of jab right there from Jake Paul. But listen to me right now. Tommy's doing a really good job of controlling this eight-foot ring. What he can't afford to do is continue to move to the left into the direction of an overhand right. Jake Paul very relaxed indeed. He eats a stiff jab from Tommy Fury. Jake Paul actually told Tommy Fury, bet your purse. If you beat me, I will double your purse. If you lose to me, you get nothing. Still no word if that's official or not. There's a right hand down the center by Tommy Fury, glancing shot. And, and I want to say this again, just so that it's clear during this fight, just because a fighter is moving does not mean that that fighter is, is afraid to fight, and it doesn't mean that that fighter is running. What Tommy is doing is he's staying out of the reach of Jake Paul, and he's setting up his jab, and he's working off of that. That's what he's supposed to do in this fight. I'll box the YouTube. There's a left hook blocked by Jake Paul under a minute to go in the second round. Jake Paul has sparred the likes of Andrew Tabidi overhand right. Also, John Pascal has been in and sparring all over the United States. Overhand right by Paul. Now they tie up. Hector Afu will separate them. And that overhand right is starting to find a home. Jake needed some kind of rhythm to get started, and now he's setting it up with a jab, feints, and overhand right. That'll get him back into this fight. Both men seem to be relaxed. A stiff jab by Tommy Fury. We call it fast chess. What does that mean? Tommy, you got hit with two overhand rights in a row. Calculate what happened and don't let it happen again. We are nearing the end. Overhand right that was blocked as Fury responds with the right of his own. A left hook, a glancing shot for Jake Paul. Two rounds in the books. Two close rounds in the books. Box. Time in there, baby. Good. Good win. We got that. I got Good. It. Okay. Left hand or? Keep both hands up. Keep that left hand up on the right hand. And you're not going to pick it in that You're leaning over a little bit. That's why he's touching you. And you still let him circle. Oh, give me choice. Okay. You gotta, cut, you gotta cut the ring off by stepping to the right and moving down the middle. Right here, the, 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 the nice jab little. right there, Tommy Fury. His jab is gonna land first because he's longer. It's up to him to use that jab and not allow, uh, not allow, excuse me, not allow Jake Paul to get confident like that right there and stay in there, eat the jab so that I can deliver overhand right. That jab has gotta come fast, it's gotta come strong, and right here, Tommy has to be elusive after throwing a jab, that way he doesn't get hit with an overhand right. That right hand that Jake Paul landed on has put away the likes of Ben Askren, Tyron Woodley, put Anderson Silva on the canvas in the final round, but Tommy Fury ate it well. And the question was, which man will be able to withstand the other's power, and which man will be able to inflict punishment on the other? So far, Tommy Fury has been able to eat the overhand right of Jake Paul, but now Jake Paul with the stiff jab to back up Tommy Fury momentarily. Absolutely. So we go when we talk about those overhand rights that have put other fighters out. Those other fighters were older. Those other fighters were a little over the hill and had some mileage. Tommy ain't got none of that. So you got a young, fresh body in front of you. It's gonna take more than one overhand right to get Tommy out of here. Now here's the thing. Sorry, but here's the thing. Tommy switched his, his, his game plan up. Why are you standing in front of Jake? Continue to move and do what was working for you in the first and second round. Good jab from the problem child. Now it is Jake Paul who is focusing more on the boxing instead of looking for that whole run shot. Yeah. That overhand right. Yeah, that's a heck of a jab that Jake is throwing. He's got the right hand in front of his face so that he doesn't get hit. He's di di dipping down a little low and he's bringing the jab hand up and it's landing clean. And let's also remember that Jake Paul and his brother Logan Paul were standoff wrestlers in high school in the state of Ohio, which is not easy to do and compete at a high level in the state of Ohio from a wrestling standpoint. Point. Guess what? You'll say, oh, that was wrestling. This is boxing. Guess what? He's an athlete. Guess what? He's a competitor. He's a real boxer. We got two real boxers in the ring today. Just one came from YouTube. That's all. One came from TV. 
It's the way social media is. Both men certainly polarizing figures in their own right. It looks like now Tommy Fury is trying to slow down a little bit, but he hit him with a definitely with a serious jab. Coming up on a minute to go for yeah. this third round. Yeah. The first, the first two rounds, Tommy was punch and move, punch and move. Now he's punching and he's standing still, and that's a problem. Nice hook right there from Jake Paul. Counter -hook. Tommy Fury's eight opponents, two of them have had winning records. So Jake Paul said, you want to look at my record, who I fought, well, who you fought. Only two of your opponents have had winning records. Uh, yeah. I don't think the record really means much. It matters what you do against those guys. Styles make bites, an overhand right on the temple, connecting for Jake Paul. Time being called by Hector Abu. Yeah, Jake right there, he just tried to use his head on Tommy, just kind of rubbed his head over Tommy's head. It's a veteran move right there. Well, when you work with the likes of BJ Flores, also Jay Leon Love and the entire team, that Jake Paul has with him, you pick up a few things or two. Absolutely. Jake Paul's uh, corner has all of the experience that he lacks. And that's why we've seen Jake get as good as he's gotten to this point. We've seen him improve. It's because of his corner. Really good, strong round right there for Jake Paul. Logan Paul, this is a stage that you've been on before in Saudi Arabia. You're the first Paul to make a huge splash here. What was the last thing that you said to Jake before he came out tonight? I said, Jake, I love you. I'm not going to give you a big speech. I know you got this, but either come back victorious or come back on your shield. I love you, bro. I love you too, man. How do you feel like he's doing so far in the fight? He's doing great. I, uh, I think the first two rounds were close. He definitely got that last round. Tommy, if you can hear me, you a bitch, bro, and you gassing out. You a bitch, the whole Fury family a bitch. You just like they know the boy. Hey, you need to faint at him and step up, creep up, all right? Slip, slip. Hey, I need you to move your fucking head all the time. Okay? Pick and shoot. Fearing, Tommy Fury clearly wore more leather in that round. He's got to pick it back up and get back on his on his toes and use the jab from the outside. Round four, this one's scheduled for eight. Logan Paul with some strong words for the Fury family. I looked over at, at them. It didn't seem to shake them. No one seemed to acknowledge what, uh, what Logan Paul said. Good exchange right there from, uh, from Tommy. The combination by Fury. You gotta, you gotta be able to read your opponent. You can, you can, if you read, if you, if you, if you know what you're looking at, you can see the punches coming from Jake. You can tell when it's gonna be a jab or a lead hook or an overhand right. So That's, you're saying Jake is telegraphing his shots? Absolutely. I, honestly, from what I can see and what I'm reading, I know when the overhand is coming, I know when the hook is coming, and I know when the jab is coming. And so for Tommy to not set his feet, a lot like what Baidu did last fight. Tommy, don't set your feet. Keep moving and don't allow Jake to get close to you. As Jake Paul went forward, he ate a couple right hands. Tommy Fury with four right hands over the course of a 15 second period. Both men predicted finishes before the end of the fourth round. We are now at the midway point of the fourth. This is good boxing, and I see experience right here from Tommy. This is this is probably a Tommy Fury that nobody expected right now. What about you, Tom, what about you, Wade? You know what, as I'm looking at him, the number one thing I'm looking at, he's waiting for him so he can catch him with the counter. And so you expect that out of someone who's a more polished boxer. So he's definitely showing us something different. A minute to go in this fourth round. Tommy Fury looks to be very relaxed inside the ring against Jake Paul. Paul's athleticism has yet to really frustrate Fury over that time period. I think it's, 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 it's the opposite. I think that I, I really wouldn't say Jake is frustrated. It's a good combination right there for Jake. They're Tommy's wrestling. comfortable in there right now. 
Tommy's comfortable in there right now. He's in his rhythm. He knows what he's looking at. He's trying to time Jake. And he turned the tables. Again, the movement is what's giving Jake trouble. Don't stand in front of Jake and allow him to punch. Keep moving. It's OK. Final moments of the fourth round between Jake Paul and Tommy Fury. Oh. There's a right hand that hit the back of the head. Hector Afu going to call time. What you do now, you got him. Push him back now. See right here, this is a nice one-two right down the middle. That's just, that's, that's good boxing, that's experience. And he saw that Jake Paul was moving back, and so he did, Tommy did what he was supposed to do. He kept pursuing. Right here is the firefight, the, a little back and forth. Another close round, a round that I felt Tommy had the better end of. Nice hook right there from, from, from Jake Paul. Nice clean hook right there. And it look, that how he set that up. He went to the body and he came back up to the top. Throw your hard shot. All right. Take a look at punches. Tommy Fury has landed 44, thrown 157. Jake has thrown nearly less than half of that. 82 only landed 27. So Tommy Fury is clearly being the busier of the two. You get, you gotta be busy. When, when you're in the ring with someone who doesn't have experience, you throw a whole lot at them, you know? And when you have opportunities, you throw the whole kitchen sink at them. Right here, this is where Tommy wins. You're leading with the jab, backing Jake up, and not allowing Jake to set up that right hand and, and come off of his back foot with a big punch. So much for that prediction from both men stating the fight will not enter the fifth. We are now into that round. Hey, you know, let's, let's keep it real. These, both these guys doing what they got to do. And when you, this is a 50-50 fight. When you get, when you have a 50-50 fight, no, it doesn't go, it goes more than, yes, it goes more than five rounds, more than four rounds. Because it's 50-50. Both of these guys are trying to set things up and land the big shot. I don't disagree with big what you're saying. Hand by Jake but Paul. we need to see a separation. And that's what we may be seeing now. We need to see a separation between these guys. What's gonna separate them from being 50-50? That's where it starts right now. Jake Paul threw an overhand right. Tommy was out of the way, and then he clocked Jake Paul with the right of his own. This is a really good boxing match. I mean, they're, they're trading jabs, they're trading big shots. Uh, I, I like the, the pace of Tommy. Hector Afu has deducted one point from Jake Paul. From both of them. He getting from both of them. No? It was only to Jake Paul. To my knowledge, he just deducted a point from Jake Paul, not Tommy Fury, because he would have to go to the judges with both men. He only did it with Jake Paul. Left hook, that set, that one on Tommy Fury. Fury might be hurt. That overhand right, that overhand right still finds a home. Even late, they made no adjustments to that. But Jake Paul still can't afford to get overzealous. These moments where, you know, especially you have points taken, you land the big shot, still take your time because Tommy Fury can, can eat your shots and he can deliver some of his own. Under a minute left here yeah. in the fifth. The deduction of a point, what does that do to the mental psyche of Jake Paul? It's not fair, uh, in my personal opinion. I don't believe it's fair. I don't think either fighter is fighting dirty. But what that does to Jake Paul is it makes him feel like he's got a rush. If anything, you can close in and make this a 9-9 round now. I agree with you, Sean. I don't think it's fair either. Both guys were throwing punches at that time. I felt big right hand to give that point away in a close fight. That's a big right hand, right on the right on the button. <laughs> That 
that'll end the fifth round. Three more rounds to go. Jake Paul deducted a point during that fifth round. Very curious to see how that is significant if it goes to the cards. Let's, let's see what we get here. It's a big hook right there from, from Jake Paul. Uh, the, and it's because Tommy has his hands down. What I really want to see, I don't know if they'll give it to us, is where the point was deducted. I just want to say this again. There was no dirty, it's not dirty fighting. Both of these guys are running their hands. They're doing what they have to do. At the end of the day, you cannot afford for the rest to be the reason this fight goes one way or the other. There is a very concerned big brother, Tyson Fury, the WBC heavyweight champion of the world. Very much supporting his younger brother, Tommy Fury. Wherever you're joining us around the world, we thank you so much for enjoying your Sunday with Jake Paul and Tommy Fury, both men undefeated. On to the sixth we go. There's a left hook connecting for Jake Paul. Nice one-two-one one from, from Jake Paul, and then Tommy comes right back. This is a 50-50 fight. This is what this is what this is going to be. Back and forth, get to the end. Both men have connected with some power shots. There's an uppercut by Tommy Fury. Fury corner making a lot of noise as Tommy Fury having more success in this sixth round. And that right there is old school. Every time you touch your opponent, if your corner is making noise, that's allowing your, that's only making your opponent know that he got hit. And that's exactly what they need to do right now. Make noise. Now who's having the best of the moment right now? A right uppercut moments ago that found its destination for Tommy Fury. I like the jab of Tommy. I like the, the movement of Tommy. What I don't like is that the jab hand doesn't come back and he stands right in line after he throws that jab. Even though Jake has landed some overhand rights and they haven't put J Tommy down, they haven't had significant uh, haven't had a significant effect on him. Eventually it'll catch up to you. There is a small abrasion. It's not bleeding underneath the left eye of Jake Paul. It is not an open wound, but it is an abrasion, a bruise of sorts underneath the left eye of Jake Paul. Compliments of those right hands from Tommy Fury. There you go. I like what Jake did. He just did a double jab. It was slow. <laughs> it was slow, but I like to see Jake try to use his jab more. Jab with the jabber. Give, give him something else to look at. Now, guess what? We need experience to make some adjustments. The corner has to make some adjustments. I would like to see him not put so much weight on that front foot. A lot of times he overexerts himself and he overextends himself and he gets caught because he has too much weight on that front foot. No offense, but they got the wrong reps for this fight. Right? You have to get a rep that understands what he's dealing with. You're dealing with two fighters who are inexperienced and anything can happen. When you're dealing with that, let it happen. Look, here we go. Now one point being deducted to Tommy Fury. So therefore, it is now a wash when it comes to the point deduction from Jake Paul. Yeah, this ref is really in the way. I wouldn't say this ref is trying to be a, su a superhero MVP of this thing, but he's just in the way. He doesn't understand what he's doing. Final moments of the sixth round. Uh, you know what, and also, I'm sorry, but to defend the ref, he is doing what he's supposed to do. But in this particular situation, there's some things you just have to be a little more lenient with. A little because bit more of, forgiving, yeah. Exactly, right. a because bit of what forgiving. you're dealing with. Yeah. Final 10 seconds of this sixth round. Tommy Fury, a point deduction. Yeah. We're on our way to the seventh. Good work. I want you to like not really. Yeah. Two rounds, I'll put it on him. Have a cover. No fancy. He's, yeah. He's gone. He's Here's one. a look at He's some of the action from water. the sixth. The right uppercut by Tommy Fury. I'm supposed to be talking over this, aren't I? <laughs> nice uppercut. I saw that when I watched the fight. A Tommy Fury, he knocked the guy out. 
with the uppercut. I said, wow, that, that's a punch right there. If he lands, he might have might, might do something for him. Both these guys, man, this is, this is action pack. It's back and forth. It's everything that we wanted it to be. It's not the big the big bang that they said it would be, at least not yet, but it's a good box. Sean, you have a deadlock at 56. There he is. Punch yeah, is Punch has landed through six. Jake Paul, 40 of 122. Fury, 70 of 230. They both start off strong here in the seventh round. If you're gonna stand in front of your opponent, you have to have a second move. After you punch, there has to be either defense or more punches, or you have to be able to move out of the way. That is the mistake that Tommy is making. He punches and he stands right there in front of him. Right there, he's able to move. That's what it has to be. And for Jake, I want to see you use more jabs. Where's your combination? Where's head, body, head? Where, where's everything I've seen you do in the past? You got to pull all that out now. It's a close fight between these two as Jake Paul continues to pursue Tommy Fury. But back comes Fury, right hand to the body. Back comes Jake Paul. A lot of wrestling. Let's just hope that we don't get another point deduction either way. Yeah, absolutely. Jay Paul seemed to come out with a little bit more energy this round. I think he understands the urgency to yeah. try to move forward on this card. This is what we call dirty boxing, but it is a lot. They are punching, grabbing. They are hitting on the break. Overhand right by Jake Paul. It's what happens when you have guys that stylistically, styles make fights, and you're going to get a lot of clutching and grabbing with these two. Absolutely, yeah, a lot of punching. Uh, in between the punches, somebody throws, the next person throws, next thing you know, there's a deadlock and there's a hole. Big right hands right there from, uh, from Tommy Fury. A series of three right hands that found their mark for the 23-year-old out of Manchester, England. Coming up on a minute to go in this seventh round. We believe it's a close fight here ringside. I believe it's a really good boxing match. Worth the ticket. These guys are definitely giving us everything we said we wanted. Yeah. They're fighting, they're boxing, they're entertaining us. It's ex this is exactly what we wanted. They're giving the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia everything they wanted here. And guess what? Jake's landing big shots. You don't see Tommy go down. Tommy's young. Jake's been in the ring with older guys. You see Tommy landing punches. Jake's not going down. Guess what? Tommy's been in the ring with guys that can't stand up to him. This is a good, competitive 50-50 fight. I told you guys that. Been saying it all week. And it's about who gets who first. Under 30 seconds remaining in the seventh round. Also to note, if Jake Paul wins, there is no rematch clause for Tommy Fury. If Fury wins, Jake Paul does have a rematch clause. Well, that, that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. What that means is, essentially, we will be seeing this fight again should Tommy Fury pull this out. If you look, you can see there's some blood coming down Tommy Fury's eye right now. He got hit on the left eye. That's that overhand right landing over and over again. One more round to go. There is a cut outside of the left eye of Tommy Fury. Logan Paul and the entire Paul family. Tense moments. Logan Paul hasn't sat down. Oh, that's a bad cut. Some blood streaming outside the left eye of Tommy Fury. And here's how the cut happened. Let's see if we get it right here. Yeah, right there. One guy coming down, the other guy coming up. Again, nothing on purpose. Nothing, nothing malicious about any anything about this right here. It's just one guy trying to go down the hole, the other guy coming up with some shots. It's boxing. It happens. Guess what, Tommy Fury? Fight through it. This is when you get the true experience. Everything that he didn't learn up to this point, he's going to have to master his way through this now. Getting From the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, this is the main event and final round of the fight. Final round. Eighth and final round between Jake Paul and Tommy Fury. We have this a close fight. Who will prevail here in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia? Starting strong. I thought we had some really good rounds. Oh, oh my goodness! Hector Abul has room to the knockdown. That could be significant. He did it against Anderson Silva, and he's done it here against Tommy Fury. Punch landed. He 
even though you slipped, the punch still landed. You were light on your feet, you stepped wrong, you fell down. That punch has significant effect right there, and we've seen it. Late fight theatrics by the proud child, Jake Paul. If there was any doubt if Jake Paul would be able to hold his own against a boxer of his level, he has answered that with resounding fashion. Absolutely. I mean, this is a 10-8 round at this point. Uh, I think this is a, a this is this is going to play into the benefit that knockdown is going to really benefit Jake Paul. Now he's got to stay on his feet and not take anything clean. Jake Paul has stated. I rise to the occasion. I thrive in the big moments. And in this close fight, when he needed something significant, he got a knockdown against Tommy Fury in the eighth and final round. And you can guarantee, as he's fighting, he understands how important this is. He's gonna put everything on the line. He just cannot afford to get touched at this point. But back comes Tommy Fury. Yeah. And guess what? If you're a judge and you're doing the right thing, you close in. And Tommy, if Tommy closes the show, this becomes a, a, a what, a, a nine, eight round? Yeah? Under a minute to go here in the eighth and final round. Tense moments between two unbeaten. Jake Paul and Tommy Fury. This place is electric here in Dariya, Saudi Arabia. If you wanted to get your tickets worth tonight, yeah. you definitely got <laughs> the cost of admission taken care of right now. These guys are putting on a show for the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Yeah. And for the world, for that matter. I really hate the role that the ref has played in this fight. Thought he should have been a little more lenient with some things. Nonetheless, this has been a really good boxing match. And we're almost here at the finish. Let's let it, let's let it breathe. What a fight that we've seen. Styles make fights. It is clear that Jake Paul and Tommy Fury were meant for each other. We go towards the final bell. Entertaining fight here in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Both men believing that victory is in their immediate future. Tell you what, man, a lot of things are said before a fight. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. You may know your opponent's game plan. You may know what they might wanna do. But when the fight, when the fists start flying and it, and it gets hot in there, this was truly a 50-50 match. We saw it round after round. Forget the truth, okay? The truth is, we had two fighters in the ring tonight. The truth is, we saw two fighters lay it all in the ring and they both did what they had to do to win this fight. So we're looking at the knockdown. That was a knockdown. Let's I take a look at not, it again. Let's have a look here. He did not step on his foot. He the did. jab knocked him down. Absolutely. It was definitely a, a punch. We see the way the foot comes from underneath him right there. We do see the foot slip. Nonetheless, you got to be strong in a moment like that. And look at Logan Paul and Team Paul erupt. <laughs> Like I said at the very beginning, it's not what people think. It's going to be a much closer fight than they think. And this was Tommy coming back right here. And, and I really like the fact that he didn't give up. After that knockdown, he didn't just let that round go away. He said, I got to stay in here, and I got to win this fight. Nice, like, back and forth. A lot of clean shots landed by both guys. You can see that both guys are courageous. Both guys have chins. Both guys are in there for it all. Very impressed with both gentlemen. Today. So now the fate of the winner lies in three judges as we take a look on what was a very entertaining eight round main event here this evening. Tommy Tyson Fury there urging on his brother just like Logan Paul was urging on his brother. Your three judges in this fight from Belgium, Daniel Vandele from Mexico, Omar Mitun from the U.S., Mike Ross. They have the distinction of claiming who is going to win this fight. In my estimation, I think the knockdown for Jake Paul in the eighth round solidified the victory for him. Yep, I fought Errol Smith Jr. Everybody said you slipped. I knew I didn't slip, but they ended up being the, the separation in that match. This knockdown right here, I believe, was the separation in this fight. Two questions that were answered. One, 
Jake Paul can box with a boxer of his caliber. Two, Tommy Fury perform at this level and embrace the moment. With that, we send it up to our ring announcer, Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight rounds, we go to the scorecards. Mike Ross scores the contest. 75-74, he has it for Paul. Omar Mintoon scores it. 76-73 for Fury. Daniel Vanderbilt scores it. 76-73 to the winner by split decision. Tommy! Tommy!